Welcome to this radio channel and in this third part of radio listening for shortwave newbies, all of you out there that haven't uh, been able to tune around or don't, don't know where to tune around because today's radio doesn't come on your manual usually, very basic and doesn't explain anything. Um, I was fortunate to uh, be in the time period where you'd buy a radio and there'd be full explanation of what is shortwave. Now, this is a video talking about the international broadcast bands. This is where you'll hear the different radio stations from different countries. The modes are AM, so it means that even the most basic of receivers will listen to these bands. Now, some are limited in the range of frequency, so some of these bands might be out of range, but most of them will be in the range of these international bands. So if you have a basic receiver that doesn't catch single sideband, then these are the bands where you need to tune to listen to signals because 99% of what's in here is in AM mode, which is the most basic mode for shortwave listening on uh, for radio stations around the world. If you have a more advanced uh, radio, basically what you'll want is to keep that radio in AM mode so don't use um, single sideband, upper sideband, lower sideband. Never use that in these uh, frequency ranges because that is not the modes that are used. You want to be in AM mode, which is the basic mode when you turn off basically the single sideband. So these are the frequency ranges. Uh, I'll put the link to this Wikipedia article in the description below the video and examine these frequency ranges. These are the frequency ranges where you'll hear international broadcasts. I would say that if you have a basic receiver or don't have um, you know any uh, very complex setup that probably 90% um, of your reception will be done in these specific bands that I just um, highlighted in blue. Uh, you can pretty much forget 2300 to 2495 in most places of the world as it doesn't have much there. In um, the 32 to 3400 kilohertz uh, there could be a few stations but typically uh, they are few and um, not necessarily very strong. Uh, Europe might listen to 3900 to 4000. This is a very European shortwave band. Uh, so if you're in Europe, why not just tune around here, that frequency range. But for the most part, you'll hear stuff starting in this, uh, from the 60 meter band all the way to the 16 meter band. Now look at the description of each band. Here you have the description of um, where you usually will listen to these stations and Basically, they will tell you, uh, for example, let's take the 49 meter band here. It says uh, 5,900 to 6,200 kilohertz. Good year-round high night band, daytime reception poor. So look at these details. This sums up pretty well the reception conditions of each band. So you know which bands are good for the daytime, which bands are good for the nighttime, and remember there's also a transition point where the sun sets and the sun rises you'll have mixed results on pretty much all the bands together so check that out and this is going to give you an idea of conditions and where you can listen to international broadcast bands typically yes there could be broadcast stations outside of these ranges but 90 8% of all the shortwave broadcasts are in these radio bands. So you might want to tune these frequency ranges slowly. And you know, if you looked at part one, dealing with the noise in your home, part two, playing a little bit with the antennas, maybe a piece of wire to improve, start tuning around these frequency ranges. Remember the ones that are nighttime, remember the ones that are daytime and just tune around. You should hear some stations on these bands. If you don't hear nothing at all 
at all. Maybe there's something wrong with the noise level in your home or your setup. Remember one thing, it's very, very, very exceptional that a radio is broken. I see this all the time. People tell me, oh, I don't hear nothing. I think my radio is broken. No, it's not. I can bet you it's not. You just have too much noise and you don't understand that the noise is actually the problem, not the radio. Um, I've rarely seen a shortwave radio that you buy that's broken because of today's high quality uh, standards. Usually a radio that you buy is in good shape. Um, tune these frequency ranges. It's very important. Understand which bands are good at what time of day. That's very important. Shortwave reception changes throughout the day. You also have a midday point where reception is the worst. If you try tuning shortwave around noon or 1 p.m. local time, you'll notice that the bands are very quiet. But if you listen a few hours before and a f up to a few hours after sunset, you'll notice that stations, there's a lot of stations around that time period because a lot of the frequency ranges are at their peak. And the gray line, that little uh, line that separates day from night on Earth, is a fantastic spot for shortwave radio reception. Remember what you hear at night, what frequency ranges. Take note of all of these little details. You know, the shortwave radio hobby is uh, not a hobby that you learn, um, you know, in, t in 48 hours. To get the knowledge that I have, it took years of radio listening and reading on the subject. Because it is a complex issue, understanding how propagation works. And another thing that will play here, and we had this week that effect, is that the sun plays a very important role on the propagation conditions. This week we had a solar wind stream that was actually reaching Earth and what happened is that it created geomagnetic storms on Earth so people close to the poles saw Aurora Borealis this week. That affects shortwave and actually on Wednesday, Thursday you would have tuned your radio when you would have heard anything. Remember that shortwave is sometimes unreliable. So sometimes what you'll hear, maybe you'll hear it two, three, four days in a row, then one night you tune and there's nothing. It can happen. That's shortwave radio. It is affected by the sun and by a lot of what's happening uh, with Earth itself. So if you are, um, you know, listening to a station and one night you don't hear it, don't worry. It's probable that your radio is not broken at all. It's just that you are in a night where there's something happening. And that's why I posted a video, by the way, about solar activity and the K-index and solar flux. That uh, is an interesting thing to check because you'll know if conditions are good or bad. And also, you know, remember that these bands are affected by the season. So summertime reception on these bands is different than wintertime reception. You'll also see shifts in times. You'll see that in winter with the short days, some of the lower bands actually come in with stations much earlier in the afternoon. You'll also see that some of these bands in the summertime only come in really late in the afternoon and early evening. So that is something that with the time of you know what your listening experience and if you listen for many years you start to understand there's a pattern that you can follow for example I know that in uh, at 3 p.m. in the afternoon in the winter I can easily tune European stations on the 31 meter band but if you try to tune 3 p.m. in July when the day is the longest that band is dead you won't hear the same stations because there is an effect of the seasonal, uh, you know, really a seasonal effect on the shortwave bands, basically. So deal with that, tune the bands, and remember, stations change frequencies twice a year. Why? Because of the seasonal changes. In winter and in summer, you don't use the same frequencies when you broadcast to target areas, because some frequencies that work well in July will not work in January. 
And we are close to one of these periods. We're getting to what's called the B2015 season or the B15 season. That is the winter schedules that will start October the 26th of this year. So in a few weeks, we'll have, you know, stations changing schedules. And that's why knowing your way around the radio schedules is important. So take a look at these frequency ranges for the international broadcast bands. It's very important. This is the first part of this article on uh, Wikipedia. Uh, click the link that I post in the description and uh, learn the frequency ranges. At some point you'll you know, know by heart which frequency ranges to tune to get to uh, international broadcasts. And tune around, try to find out what you're listening to. And uh, look at my video where I show you how I find out what stations I might be listening to by using uh, online uh, websites like uh, EIBI Space and also the shortwave-info, uh, short-wave.info website, sorry. Um, just I have all of these videos that I've been posting in the past few weeks. Uh, this is a very intense um, series of videos on the be shortwave beginning. If you're starting up in shortwave, watch these videos. They are going to help you understand a little more what's happening on the shortwave bands. And unfortunately, remember that the shortwave bands, you know, some of you that have been listening to shortwave 30 years ago come back to the hobby and say, wow, things have changed. And yes, they have changed. It's harder today to receive stations than it was 30 years ago when the bands were full of signals and strong signals. So you got to cope with that and understand that. But you know what? Shortwave is still a great hobby. It's still interesting to listen to. So the international broadcast bands, that is the minimum that every radio can receive. Every radio receives the international broadcast bands on shortwave. Of course, shortwave radios. So if you've got a basic $15 radio, you can receive these bands. If you've got an advanced, more advanced radio with single sideband and everything, you can listen to these international broadcast bands in the AM mode. This is the basics of any radio, any shortwave radio. If you enjoy my videos, want to subscribe to my channel, you'll be informed when your videos are online. If you have any comments, questions, anything you want to know, please feel free to ask. And uh, give us thumbs up if you like the videos. Helps us in the ratings on YouTube. And uh, if you're a newbie in the shortwave radio hobby, follow me on these videos. They're going to help you a lot in understanding how to listen to stations.